Your county informational tape service presents highlights from the Kansas City Convention, one of the best in the history of the National Farmers Organization. Devon Woodland, in his State of Affairs address early in the convention, stated NFO's goals. The goals that we have established and the departments have accepted that by June 1981, 18 months down the road, we will be moving $1.5 billion worth of commodity through this organization. <laughs> How are they coming? The percent that would cause this to happen, they're pretty well on course. They may vary just a little bit, but they're on course, and we check weekly with them. How's your goals, your percentages, are they holding? And five years from today, the projections that we're now looking at will be $5 billion of commodity through this organization. And people, when that happens, this organization will be the source of agriculture markets. Woodland's acceptance speech was a classic, one of the briefest ever expressed to delegates of any organization, and yet full of meaning and from the heart. Here's Devon Woodland right after being unanimously elected to a full term as president of the National Farmers Organization. Thank you very much. You know, I felt like perhaps you were stuck with me when Orrin Lee resigned and no choice on your part. And now I feel like you want me. I appreciate so much the friendship of you, the members of this organization. I pledge myself to you, and I'm asking that you pledge yourself to this organization. One of my goals is to retire farm debt. <laughs> Excessive farm debt will destroy people. It will divide families. It will destroy homes and marriages. Farm debt must be eliminated. You have asked me now to Leave my farm, leave my family, and to serve you. And before we leave this convention, I'm going to ask you to do some things for me. It gives me a great deal of pride to serve in this capacity. We hear Bob Arndt, Vice President of the NFO, as he addressed the Young Farmers Meeting at the Kansas City Convention. With the costs skyrocketing, interest rates climbing, the income of agriculture predicted to be 20 to 30 percent less next year, it is almost an impossibility for young farmers to get into the business of farming and ever hope to pay off their debt. There is one hope. And that hope is that the members of this organization, those from the very beginning of the early days, along with the young farmers that we need as leaders at this time, and those that will become members that are trying to get into farming, with their effort and working together and putting production together to develop a power block in the marketplace, that hope in nationwide collective bargaining is the only hope for agriculture's future and the future of the young farmers across this country. One of the great features of the annual conventions of the NFO 
is their attention to bargaining programs in various commodities. Let's go from one to another of these bargaining sessions on Wednesday at Kansas City. First, here's Walt Hackney, Director of Livestock and Meat Commodities. I can tell you tonight that this organization's commodity departments are in tune and are simply waiting for your participation. It requires training. It requires confidence in you. It requires your expression to the members in the country concerning our commodities. We gratefully appreciate your participation this past year. I want to tell you that I have given a pledge to the National Board that the hog department will increase their production 112 percent in fiscal 1980. I want to tell you the feeder department will increase their production 50 percent, slaughter cattle 75 and sheep 100 percent. We don't mind the challenge. We feel it is certainly obtainable. We feel that through the participation we expect from the membership, it's there. We have it ready. The contracts, as I said, are ready, and all we need is your total participation. Next, Merle Sunken, Director of Operations for the Hog Division, outlining different types of NFO programs available to hog producers. He also noted the success of the sow sell-off, which NFO has been conducting, with sow marketings advancing 2% thus far during the NFO action. We've got direct delivery on your hogs. We've got a graded program for your hogs. We have forward sales contracts for your hogs where you don't pay any margin charges, any margin calls. It's a direct sale to the packer. Nobody's going to play with it and buy it and resell it and make profits on it. The National Farmers Organization, they never take ownership of your product. They are a bargaining organization on behalf of its membership. We do have the programs. We're confident in them. We want to get you directly involved in all areas as soon as we can, as quick as we can. Dick Hammond, director of the Sheep Division. He mentioned to the NFO convention that for the past five years, NFO programs have been at or above the market. We've got people and staff that are qualified to bargain for you. We've got people and staff that are able to check out the financial arrangements. Uh, we've got people and staff that can do anything in the sheep program that's necessary to bring about a satisfactory price and a cost of production plus a reasonable profit, except we have one missing link. The sheep division can't sign a contract for sale. But uh, I understand the, the ground rules are that you have to participate, and that part of that participation is signing that contract for sale. NFO has given me the privilege of representing the largest land block in the United States. NFO has also given me the privilege of having the only national sheep program in the United States. These things you have done these things you have given to me, and also the obligations that go along with it. I think you've got one thing to make up your mind to, and it's very simple. You've got two decisions. Do you want to use the NFO system, the program, the one designed for you, administrated for you, your own organization, your own system, or do you use the other system? the system that is devised by gentlemen who have no other purpose but to glean the greatest profit from you. Here's Gary Ellis, acting director of the NFO feeder cattle division. We've got about three ways that I want to tell you about right quick here that we move feeder cattle. We have regular ratification meetings at which we price two nights before our sale the cattle then are moved the second day after the pricing meeting. We sell load lots of cattle or better direct, and we have future contracts. And I think everybody that was on NFO's future contracts for feeder cattle this year are more than satisfied. And I want to thank all of you for helping us. 
and I want to see you all back on them next year and your friends along with you. And Steve Bohr, director of the Slaughter Cattle Division. I want to ask you a question. If you had a set of cattle to sell and two people called on you, one of them was a buyer that was going to buy those cattle from you just as cheap as possible, and the other one was going to assist you in selling those cattle for as high as possible, I wonder if you have a hard time making up your mind which one of those people you would want having doing business with you. It seems like there's a lot of people in the United States that are having a problem with that. You don't have any options available to you in any kind of a market in the country that you don't have available within this organization. We're at the bottom of the cattle cycle and we're having a problem making profits on fed cattle. The next time you're talking to your banker, maybe you ought to mention that to him and ask him what he thinks will happen within three or four years when we reach the top of the cattle cycle. Walt Hackney at the convention had some words to review the livestock meetings at Kansas City and to summarize them. It simply boils down to one thing. You've got to participate. You've got to have the confidence in these people that are expressed in them by the same people that are allowing them to spend money for them to procure your product. You've got to understand that the packing interests are allowing these bargainers to physically take their dollars and apply them to your product for them, sight unseen in most cases. That couldn't have happened a couple years ago. It has only happened within the last year or so. And that's why I have no qualms about committing ourselves to this increased goal of production for 1980. My only problem is sitting in your seat. If you respond as the packing and processing interests have responded to this kind of talent that has been put together for you, then I can assure you that next year we'll be talking about a goal we set that was so obtainable that we in fact raised it. Here is Ed Graff, director of the dairy department. A man spoke to the convention, to the dairy meeting today from a, the dairy industry that's not known nationwide but worldwide. That was from Beatrice Food. And his opening remarks were that they are doing business with the National Farmers Organization and hope to expand that business and then went on to explain the strength of Beatrice Food, the size of Beatrice Food, and if there's anything that I think I perhaps had problems with in the first 10 years in the dairy department was to convince farmers that if they were willing to keep this production block together, we would someday reach the point that we could negotiate with and market and bargain with the biggest processor in the world. And today he faced the people in this convention and talked to them. And I think that's a major accomplishment for the farmers who have put that production together. In his final address to the 1979 convention of the NFO, Devon Woodland said this. And that farm power is not in Corning. That farm power is not here in Kansas City. That farm power is in the grain bins. It's in the dairy barns, in the feedlots. That's where the farm power is. And we want you to go home and use your influence to cause that farm power to be gelled and brought together so that when we meet next year, we can talk about that $1.5 billion that we talked about earlier that will be moving through the channels of this organization. It will be done with county leaders, 
It will be done with county committees, and no other way will we be successful. I know you're interested in what we've been doing as far as signing up production in the organization goes here at this convention, and the grain department just handed me a note, and I want to refer to it and let you know how much grain they put on contract for sale yesterday. One day, they put 12 million bushel on contracts for sale yesterday. One more thought, if you'd like to catch the flavor and the style of this new National Farmers Organization, here's a highlight from the address of Ralph Kittleson, director of the grain department. We've been putting a lot of grain together. I am firmly convinced that our membership is really starting to understand what we're talking about, and that is production. We've been talking systems for a year, and we absolutely know for sure by now that that old system, that brand X, can't work. Going to take a new system. And we've got it. Absolute exclusive. No one else in the country. Regional offices, communications all over the country. And it's because of our attitude, I think, as a group of farmers. We know we have to do it, don't we? I just want to tell you a little story. It's about attitude. It concerns a football-type player who married. Uh, he was a six foot six and 240 pounds, and he marries his petite little gal, and they go on the honeymoon, and they register at a hotel, and they get into the room, and the first thing that he does is remove his trousers, and he's handed it over to her and said, here, you put these on. And being very dutiful, new wife and all, she's stepped into him very dutifully and of course the trousers was out about to here and she was standing where his knees had been and she says I can never fill these out he says that's right he says I'm the one who wears the pants in this outfit <laughs> and so she stepped out of them and then she also stepped out of her own little panties and she says here you put these on and he looked at those little bitty things and he says well, he said, I can never get into those. She says, that's right, and with your attitude, you never will either. <laughs> All right, right on. And part of this attitude of the new NFO is optimism, self-confidence, and style, and even sometimes a sense of humor. Your county monthly tape informational service is compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the radio division. I'm Phil Allen reporting. And that, for this month, is something to think about.